Hi, welcome to video tutorial number 40. Today we're going to do a little video delay using the matrix set object. So I started off with a little patcher we made the other day, um, the one that had the SOC monkey, otherwise known as sock monkey sound output. We're not actually going to use that today, so I deleted the spigot. But we are going to just use the, the movie player part of it. So if you can conjure that up onto your desktop, it's a good place to start. Let's um, just get out the matrix set object first. And you type jit.matrixset. And there it is, the matrix set object. I'm going to type 30 because we want um, 30 frames of video. And then the other numbers I'm going to type in here are going to be very similar to what you typically type into a JIT matrix. Uh, four planes, uh, C-H-A-R is the type of numbers we're going to use. That's characters 0 to 255. And um, then we make the dimensions 320 by 240. And now I'm just going to stop and explain this object a little tiny bit. <clears throat> what the jitter matrix set does is that it can store a number of frames and in this case 30. In video we're usually playing at about 30 frames a second so I'm going to store about one second of frames in here and so we have the video coming out of the jit.qt.movie and going into the jitter matrix. That's great but we have to find a way to keep track of them. They're going to go in there and it's going to keep 30 of them at any given time, but what we need to do is index them, meaning assign them a number. So we're going to assign them a number, I would say from 1 to 30, but you know how computers are, so we'll just make it from 0 to 29 because that's so much simpler. So um, in order to do that, we'll need a counter object, so just get a new object there and type in counter and we're going to be counterintuitive with our counter and count backwards today so we're going to type a 1 in there and then we're going to have it go from 0 to 29 that's your max and minimum numbers and let's move that up to the top because we always seem to run out of space here okay um, the counter is going to count from 0 to 29 and um, index the frames that are coming in. In order to get it to do that, we have to bang the counter every time a frame comes out of the JITQT movie. So let's make a trigger object. Just type the letter T, or you can type in trigger. It can also just be T. And then type the letter space, and then type B. Now, every any time something triggers this, it's going to send out a bang, okay? And it's going to bang the counter. Now, we just put a line from the movie up to the trigger. And then <clears throat> we'll just put a, a type letter I so that we can sort of see it running. That means an integer. And then this number, which is going to be our index number, um, needs to be put in here following the message index. So we could either prepend it, index, or do this other way, which is you just type the word index in a message box, and then string one. Either one of those will work. Today we're just going to use the message version. Okay, so index 0 comes out of there. It's going to be index 0, and then it'll store that um, jitter matrix in there as 0. And then it, it will run around 0 all the way up to 29, and it'll start over at 0, and that will replace it. So at any given time, we'll have 30 frames of video in here. Um, kind of chasing its tail around in a circle. And then we're going to want to output it. And in order to output it, we're going to use a different message, which is type the letter M and say output 
matrix, yes. Output matrix indeed. And then we're also going to make that string 1. Again, we could have done prepend output matrix, but who needs to be so complicated? Okay, now here's the tricky part. Now we need a counter. <clears throat> now we need a counter that runs the output matrix. We're inputting these things, but it's not going to put any video out. Here, we'll make it its own video window real quick here. We'll option click on that window, drag it over there. Okay, so we can just use this counter to output this, but what we want to do is um, be running a different number. So when this one's running zero, if we want to have a delay of one frame, we'll want this one to be one, and if we want a delay of 15 frames, we'll want this one to be 15. Um, well, uh, the easiest way to do that is just simply add the number that we're talking about to the number that's coming out of the counter. So we'll uh, type a new object, just type plus, and any number to start, in this case, we'll say 10. That's a, it's a delay that you'll at least see, so you'll know what your effect is doing when it comes out of there. Now, of course, if this thing counts to 29 and then adds 10 to it, that's not going to work real well for us. So we're going to use that awesome tool, the modulo, which is the percent sign, and we're going to keep it down to 30 frames. So now, we run this out of here, we say modulo 30, and essentially that just wraps it around. So if it's 31, it ends up being 31. Modulo subtracts 30 from whatever number you've got or whatever number you put in here. It subtracts that as many times as it can until there's a remainder left and then it outputs the remainder. So if you put in modulo 30, you'll never end up with a number bigger than 30. Okay? Um, and then we just need to run the counter out to that number and then an integer here that we can use to control it. Or we could be very, very fancy and put a slider here, which is, of course, we're always fancy. So let's type a new object, get a slider. Come on, slider. Slider. Oop. I have a, um, an amazingly lazy computer here. OK. and. We want that to only put out numbers between 0 and 30. So let's zoom down here to the range and change it to 30. Okay. We don't want a float output because there's no such thing as 0.5 frames. And uh, one output model. Okay, looks good here. And we can put that up top here and use that for our delay. Awesome. Okay. And uh, let's just check and make sure it goes from 0 to 30. Fantastic. Let's set it at 10 so we're back where we started here. All right. And going over what happens here, video comes out. We'll see it over here. Goes into this with an index number because it's banging on this, making it count. Index number goes in along with every frame. And then, at the same time, we're going to bang out a number that's 10 higher, and so we'll get an image that's 10 frames behind over here. That is our hope. Here we go. Hey, look at that. I... It's almost like we're professionals. There we go. So. Let's take it down to try to get it right in time with each other. Woo! Of course, what happened is it banged all those numbers as it went down. So um, I imagine if we slide this up, it'll hold still for a second. And then, when, OK, so there's our delay of 22 frames. 
and now sliding down Whee! makes everything go fast they should be hmm let's try that one again I think what we're working with here is partially we're, we're, we're talking about video delay and uh, partially um, my computer is not able to keep up with it. Uh, I'm supposed to get my computer back from the shop today. But here we are at two frame delay and it's pretty close. We'll try to bring it down to one frame delay and now we're going to go to zero and if that suddenly goes to a long delay. Aha! <clears throat> I will tell you what's happening is that it's skipping around to 29. We have this crazy situation where um, the counter is uh, adding 0 to uh, uh, it's adding 0 and it's managing to get um, frame 29 instead of frame 0 out of this. So, uh, because 30, I wonder if I change that to 29, whether that'll fix the problem. Because it's module. Oh well, uh, we'll leave that for another time. Suffice it to say, you need to have one here to have this at playing at the same speed. Very interesting. Well that is how you do a video delay and if you then want to whoops let's uh, zoom out a little bit here and uh, let's just uh, do one more thing which is to get our little X fade object in there uh, oops unlock your patcher type letter N type JIT Dot X fade. Come on. And that's how you'll be able to less of our processor and uh, give us more room for our X fade device. Okay, so there's X fade. Now we can take this movie's output. And this movie's output. And control them. We'll need another slider. And we'll have to. Go over to the inspector and change its range to 1 or 1 1.0 as we like to use because and then we do want to float the output on this slider because when you have a 0 to 1 hey didn't I just change that to a 1 isn't that amazing how, how there we go Okay, better. All right, so now we're going to get a anything between 0 and 1 for X fade, and we can put this slider over here. Well, let's put it there. Where and um, we want to, oh, we'll use the prepend this time, another new object. Prepend. And then um, we're gonna. You just need to send it the message X fade. So if we would have put this in a message, we would have just put X fade. Particularly when I'm dealing with floats, I like to use prepend. I feel more safe. I'm not actually even sure that the message would handle it. Okay. And then we'll take one of these patcher windows. And I wonder how many I just made there. Okay. And we'll make it big so that we can see our overall effect there.
and we lock our patcher. I'm going to save my patcher just because starting to feel like the computer might crash. And now we can fade between them, I hope. Oh, uh, of course there's no delay, so uh, let's turn our delay up here to... There we go. Hey, look at that. Got a little delay happening there. And if you want all delay, you go over here. All live action over here to the left. And somewhere in the middle is somewhere in the middle. All right, that's it for video delay. Next video, uh, next tutorial, I'll show you how to actually do something cool with it. But until then, thanks for watching.